Hello friends, this is Mila Neha Jinsu. Welcome to my channel that is all about enhancing what you have. Today we are going to talk about ghost stories. I'm going to read ghost stories that have been sent to me by you. Now, if you're someone who want to submit your ghost stories, you can always DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is Laneha Jinsu. So yeah, let's get started. I will be reading your ghost stories from my phone. So that is why I will be looking down. So please excuse me. This story has been translated by my friend Taiba. Let's start. Hi. Me and my fiance were traveling to Islamabad from Karachi. So we went to Texela with them to a museum and after that we went to a place where Wu Sheher Zameen Booz ho gaya tha. What the hell is Zameen Booz? So they went to a place in Texela that has been ruined basically. So when you go towards Khanpur from Texela a little farther there is this place Julia where that happened my parents went and sat on the benches right away me my fiance and two brothers went further and we found a guide my fiance asked for his charges and after discussion we decided on 300 rupees and so we went to tour so the weird thing was that everything was dusty but there were a few caves and the way the guide was telling us that they used to sell gold jewelry at this place and at that place a lady selling utensils used to sit and at that place that happened and at that place this happened we felt it very weird but it was around 3 pm and the sunlight was pretty harsh so i asked my brothers to take me and my fiance's picture my and to take mine and my fiance's picture from my phone but he said it's so sunny i can't see the screen so i told him to take a lot at least one out of them will be good i took my brother's pictures too suddenly my fiance noted the guide staring with concentration so my fiance told me to take his picture with guide too so my fiance asked him but he refused but my fiance and brothers insisted so he stood with them for the pic My fiance put his arm on the guide's shoulder and I couldn't see the screen clearly but took the pic. When we were leaving, we gave 300 rupees as decided, but the guide got offended and he decided to get 500 rupees. But me and my brothers told him we decided 300 rupees, so we gave the money and came back. We were in the car when I took out my phone to see the pictures. All of the pictures were there except the one with the guide. in that in that the guide was missing means that the guide was some other creature we got so scared thinking what if he came to collect the 200 rupees but thank god nothing like that happened maybe it was a camera flare or something i don't know okay but thank you for submitting your story so this next story is by iraj fatima salam The story I'm about to tell happened with my parents and uncle. In 1987, my parents, uncle and aunt and older brother who was approximately 1 years old went to Sawat for vacation. They reached there at Maghrib's time, sunset, so they decided to stay at the first nice hotel they saw. The hotel was quite big, but when they went inside, it was pretty empty, like not a lot of guests were there, so they requested for two rooms side by side. They got rooms right across the hall from each other. The corridor was quite long. After eating dinner, everyone went to their rooms to sleep, but a little while later, someone knocked on my parents' room. My dad opened the door, but there was no one. My dad knocked on my uncle's door and asked him if he knocked on their door but he didn't. Well, he went back to his room. A little later, someone knocked again. And when my dad opened the door, he saw my uncle. Someone knocked at his door very hard, so he asked my dad if it was him, but it wasn't. They thought maybe it's a waiter who's bothering them but how would he hide after knocking as the corridor was pretty long when this happened a few more times then my dad and uncle decided to stay by the door with their hands on the door knob 
Now, when they heard someone knocking, they immediately opened their door to see each other across the hall, but no one else. means whoever knocked did that at the same time on both doors and disappeared they got very scared my dad got worried for my brother so they packed up their stuff and left the hotel immediately they sat in the car and all that mountain area which seemed beautiful at daytime looked super scary at night they kept driving when suddenly they saw something on the road so they slowed down and in the middle of the road there was a dead person in a white sheet in the middle of the road and there was no one around so my dad tried to drive the car on the side and after that nothing happened you may have experienced in these northern areas the hotels and all are usually haunted okay i haven't been to northern areas like i just have been to kashmir and that's it and i've been to kashmir a couple of times well wow. oh my god before we uh, like go further i just want to show you my fashion so here is a chanel brooch that i'm wearing like on my dubatta yeah that's my cd choker uh that's my garnet uh necklace pendant or carnelian then there is this my Bulgari ring, this is Gucci ring, that's my red coral ring and that's my dad's ring. I'm gonna hide it. Oh yes, I'm also wearing this citrine bracelet that I got designed and made like in Pakistan and that's a Tibetan rope bracelet that I got from Tibet. So let's read another story. You might be thinking that I'm being a little show off, but that's the way I am. Next story is again by Irish Fatima. This story today happened with my husband's aunt when she was in ninth class. Her name was Shehnaz and her older sister's name was Shazia. The sisters used to go to this government school whose buildings were very big and had big grounds. There were three to four water coolers and one cooler was strictly off limits. It was in this ground under a large banyan tree and no one knew why it was off limits. Shana's auntie was very pretty with long hair. One day at break time, friends were playing on the ground when she felt thirsty and she was too tired to go towards other coolers so, coolers, so she drank from that cooler under the tree. Everything was fine when she went to class but after that her head felt heavy and her eyes got red. Her friends told the teacher that she drank from that cooler. She told her to put her head down and sit and ask Shazia to carefully take her back home after school. When it was time to go, she was kind of unconscious like she as she was walking, she was fine but she wasn't answering. In those days cars were uncommon so they had a horse cart pick and drop from the school. As soon as they neared the horse cart, the horse being close to Shehna started to rear and make weird noises. The driver tried to get them to sit but again the horse behaved in that unusual way. So the driver asked what happened to Shehna because he was looking at her and noticed something. Shazia told him the story and so he got them to sit somewhat with some difficulty. When they reached home, the driver asked for their father. The girls went inside and their father came out. The driver told their father everything and that he knows a Baba, an old man, but their father got offended and said, my daughter is fine and went inside. In those times, these things, especially for girls, was not something you would want everyone knowing. Inside the scene was different, Shana's voice had gone deep and she kept asking for food. She used to eat one chapati, one bread, but she ate six to seven and kept asking for more. Sometimes sweet, sometimes meat. I'm scared. But when we said something, she would go crazy and start yelling and throwing things. Her eyes had become completely red and her voice was as deep as a guy's voice. The night passed with difficulty. Sometimes she would be calm and sleep, but sometimes she would start shouting. I'm scared. 
Their mom read Quranic verses, but nothing happened. Next morning, dad asked their driver and brought the Baba with the old man home. When he saw Shana, she started jumping on the bed while sitting crossed-legged. And when the man started reciting verses, she started screaming. The man grabbed her fingers and the that possessed her came out. He told that he lived under that tree and when she came to drink, he fell in love with her. And while later, the left and Shanaz came back and she was okay, except she didn't remember anything and her head was heavy and she said had she had body pain. The man told them that the Jen doesn't leave easily, so he asked them to make Shanaz wear a red fabric, but nothing metal to have touched that red fabric. So they wrapped it around her like a sari. He read something and blew on her, locked her in the room and gave the key to their father and told whatever happens, whatever voices or screaming she does, if you want to see your daughter alive, then do not open the door till sunrise and left to pray. All the people in the house were told not to open the door. At first it was quiet, but suddenly as soon as the man started praying, there came weird noises from the door. Sometimes a guy's voice saying, you can't do anything to me, something screaming. Sometimes loud knocking on the door as if the door might break down and sometimes the voice saying he'll take her away and kill them all. Due to this noise, Shana's siblings got scared and started crying. So the dad thought to take them to their aunt's home not too far from here. He told their mother that no matter what happens, do not open the door and left. As soon as he left, it became quiet. Then suddenly Shanaz began speaking in her voice, begging her mother to let her out and accusing the man to be cahooting with the jinn. Sometimes it would seem as if someone was choking her and she was struggling to speak, asking her mom to let her out or else he would kill her. Her mother decided to open the door and as soon as she inserted the key in the door, her father came and took the key and yelled at their mother. The jinn in his voice started yelling and banging the door. Her dad put his jar pie or bed in front of the door and lied down so that no one may open the door again. The night went on and it was fajr time like it was sunrise time when the noise stopped. The man prayed fajr and came and asked them about all that happened at night and opened the door to see Shehna's unconscious. Jin had left them but capturing the jinn was left. The Baba or the man asked the mother to change her clothes and give him her red cloth. He recited something on the cloth and locked it in a metal suitcase and padlocked it and used thread to bind the lock and gave the box to her father. The jinn is too strong, we cannot kill him, but we can capture him, he said. I'm very f scared. I'm like, I'm, okay, I'm scared and I'm ending the story. Like, this is the last. Until this box is closed, your daughter is safe. Uh, and when it's opened, he will take her away with him. After seven to eight years, Shinaz got married and her siblings got married. And when her parents passed away, they safely put the box in their elder brother's house. But when he passed away, but when he passed away, his kids gave the box to her husband to safe keep. But he didn't tell Shana so he doesn't get scared or she doesn't get scared. He kept it safely on the roof. Then bad things started happening. Her two kids would fall randomly, their heads would get heavy and their eyes would become red. And so these things started happening with the husband and he would randomly, and he would randomly get hurt. Then her husband got sick and passed away. No one knew what was happening in her house. As soon as mourning period was over, she was married to her husband's brother. But bad things kept happening and they thought it was something wrong with the house, so they started shifting. Good thing that they didn't thought that it was like something was wrong with the girl. During the shift, they saw the box and when the laborers were bringing the box, it fell. The lock broke, but the box did not open. As soon as they saw the box, they realized what the issue was. But because of the lock breaking, the same thing happened to aunt and again she was closed in a room and the box was locked and she got better. That box had been in my house too for some time and I've seen it too but Alhamdulillah no one tried to keep the box in her home and she is all safe now.
here is the thing this was the story and I'm kind of freaking out and I will not continue this part further so this is the last I think I heard a noise and I will end this part. Bye.